I'm so frustrated. I feel like I could snap my Kindle in half. Emotionally, I'm a wreck. I literally had like a, a mini mental breakdown earlier and then I read a chapter about the Pegasus bedazzling their dicks and now I'm laughing again. <laughs> oh my god, you're 35. Can you learn to just like express what bothers you, please? I literally feel like I'm gonna have a heart attack. As you already know, we are starting a vlog today. It is going to be like continuing slash finishing series I'm in the middle of. I really enjoy watching these vlogs and I felt like this month was the perfect time for me to film one because when I was making my June TBR, two of the books that I selected for the TBR were part of a series that I was in the middle of. So I figured why not make a vlog, include those two, and then I added one more. So throughout the video we're gonna read Zodiac Academy book six, Faded Throne, and then also Unfortunately Yours by Tessa Bailey. These were the two that were picked for my TBR. And then the third book I'm gonna add on to that is Do Not Disturb by A.R. Torrey. This is the second book following The Girl in 6E, which was a five-star read for me, but it's been, I think, almost a year since I've read that book. So I just really need to carry on with this series as well. So those are going to be the three books we tackle in today's video. I decided to start with Faded Thrones just because this book is, oh I gotta be really careful not to spoil myself. 647 pages in this physical version, but this is also a large book as you can see. So since this one is by far the longest, I figured I'd start with this and maybe, you know, take breaks and read the other ones in between, but I just wanted to get started with this one and I'm on chapter four, which is a little over 50 pages in. Right off the bat, I was frustrated. I was a little pissed off, which is typical for these books. Like the one thing that these books will always do is make me feel something, whether it's rage, frustration, happiness, sadness, despair, no matter the emotion, I will probably feel it while reading this book. These books just have such a like, the plot line just pulls you in so much that you care so deeply about everything that's happening and it's so frustrating to like watch it all unfold. The Zodiac Academy series, if you're not familiar with it, follows these two twin sisters who are living like in the human world and one day they get a visit from this guy. They get told like they're the long lost princesses of Solaria and so they're brought there to a like essentially a college called Zodiac Academy that they like have to complete their education there in order to be eligible for the throne and so while they're there they're like learning about their powers and like every person has some like mythical form like there's literally every type of mythical creature in here there's vampires werewolves dragons pegasus pegasi sirens literally Anything you could think of probably exists in this world. There's one girl who's a Cerberus, and the catch to all this is that because they've been missing for so long, these other four prominent families have kind of taken over ruling this world, and they conveniently have four male heirs, all the same age, who are at this college, and the first, like, three books basically are basically like a bully. They're just bully books like of these heirs against the twin sisters, the Vega sisters, because they do not want them coming back. And like, if they hadn't come back, these four heirs would have like a clear path to the throne. Like they would take over for their parents eventually and ruling the world. And so they're butting heads a lot. The first like early books can get a little frustrating because it's really just like their day to day at Zodiac Academy and like the fighting and the all of the stuff that goes on between the Vega twins and the heirs, but now we're kind of launched into more of like the full plot that's happening. So it is very like entrancing. I'm just want to know so bad what's going to happen. These books are very emotional, so I'll probably have strong feelings throughout the reading experience. But yeah, 
I'm just gonna keep reading for the rest of the night, see how far I can get, and uh, yeah, I'll let you know when I have thoughts about it. I'm a little bit farther, just a little bit farther into the book, but like I literally just want to scream. And I don't want anybody to take this as like complaining because it's not intended that way. It's just like I'm so frustrated. I feel like I could snap my Kindle in half. And it's like in the sense of the way they tell the story is so well done that like you just feel everything. And at this point in time, I literally want to kill everyone. Like I'm so frustrated. feel like I could puke. What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Hello everybody. It's the next afternoon. Today is Sunday, so I spent most of the day so far filming and then like editing and uploading my May wrap up. That's just finishing uploading right now. And so now I can finally like take a breath and read for the rest of the day. It's like three o'clock. Last night, I ended up getting to about 25% of the way into Zodiac Academy. On my Kindle, it says page like 170 something. The physical copy, it's page like 150 something whatever, 25-ish percent. Honestly, I feel like I wanted to keep reading last night. Like I didn't want to stop where I was because I so invested, but like my eyes were just closing. I could not stay awake any longer. I feel like so far it's going well, not emotionally because emotionally I'm a wreck but like I'm so drawn into the story right now. It's in such a precarious place that I am like so anxious, so on the edge of my seat. Like I have to know what's gonna happen. I am really excited to get back into it today. It's been like bugging me that I haven't been able to read until now, but I just needed to like get my wrap up out of the way so that I could focus the rest of the day. And like I said, it's only three o'clock, so I still have a good amount of the day and night that I can continue to read. So I'm gonna keep trying to make progress on this one. So it is quite a few hours later. It's like absolutely pouring outside right now, but I've been reading and I'm now about 40% of the way through the book, about 300 pages. Ages. As I've been reading, I keep catching myself having these moments where I'm like, you know, everything kind of sucks right now, but I'm like, keep telling myself it's gonna get better soon, it's gonna resolve soon, because I keep forgetting that like there's three more books after this one. There's no guarantee that everything is gonna be like wrapped up with a pretty bow on top at the end of this book. And I just keep forgetting that I could be in for like thousands more pages of pain before any of this stuff actually gets resolved. So that's super fun for me. Regardless of that, I am enjoying this book a lot right now in the sense of like, I just think that the plot that's happening is really keeping me invested. I think that I'm also enjoying it more because I took such a big break from reading the last book to this one. So I've just kind of missed like being in this world and with these characters and it's feeling really good to be back with that. And so I'm just kind of enjoying all elements, even though like <laughs> it's so hard to say like I'm enjoying it cause it's like, it's so stressful and so like taxing on my mental state with the things that are happening. But like, I'm just happy to be back in these books, I guess. It's funny because there's so many very serious things happening, so many dire circumstances going on, but the authors still mix in these chapters that are just like pure 
ridiculousness or like sometimes it's just like pure joy where like small good things happen but they find a way to break it up so that one minute you're in despair and the next minute you're laughing because something ridiculous is happening. I just read a chapter before the one I'm on now that literally like the whole chapter, the point of it was essentially to explain to you that the Pegasus people bedazzle their privates <laughs> and <laughs> it's just dumb. There are so many times throughout this book and throughout like this series in general where you're just sitting there and you're just like what in the ever loving shit is happening right now? This is insane. If you just embrace it and you just don't think too hard about how ridiculous it is, it can just be fun. It can just be silly goofy fun. It can be escapism for the sake of escapism. It's not trying to be anything more than that and I love it for that. Honestly, like I feel like I need that right now. So I'm just in it at this point. That's where I'm at as of right now. I am just... I don't know. I feel like I'm in such a weird mental state right now because I literally had like a, a mini mental breakdown earlier and then I read a chapter about the Pegasus bedazzling their dicks and now I'm laughing again. <laughs> so like, glad I'm reading this book, I guess. That's all. That's all I had to say. Hello everybody. It is now the next day. It's about 12.30 in the afternoon. I ended up not really reading a lot more last night after I last updated you, but today while I've been working, I decided to start the audiobook for Unfortunately Yours by Tessa Bailey. I've already gotten a little over halfway through. I'm on chapter 15, page 190. This is the second book in the Vine Mess duology. It follows a pair of siblings whose parents owned a very successful vineyard. The first book, Secretly Yours, follows the brother and this book follows his sister. I didn't really know a lot about this book before going into it. Really, all I knew is that it involved some kind of like fake marriage, which, you know, I didn't really have to use a lot of detective skills to figure that out based off the cover, but I didn't really know like the circumstances behind it or anything like that. Now that I'm halfway into it, I know that it is following Natalie, the sister, and she previously was living in New York, had this really high profile job at a hedge fund company, was engaged, like kind of had everything going for her, and then she made a really bad deal and lost a lot of money and ended up getting forced out of her company and her fiance dumped her. And so she's been living back at the vineyard for a while, just kind of trying to like regroup. Now she kind of has it in her head that she wants to start her own company with one of her coworkers and just really make her own name for herself, go back to New York, whatever. But in order to do that, she needs money. She needs to show investors that they have capital behind them, all of that kind of stuff. Stuff. She does not really have a lot of money, even though she comes from a pretty like affluent family, their vineyard. We learn a lot more about it in the first book, but it was really struggling. So they don't necessarily have a ton of cash to just give out right now. And so really her only option would be to get her trust fund. But in order to get her trust fund, she needs to get married. And she knows this other guy in town who's trying to run his own vineyard that's just like failing miserably. Like he's the world worst winemaker apparently and he needs money to invest in his vineyard to like improve the quality of his product. They've known each other for a little while and they butt heads. They have a very strong attraction but they fight a lot. They got into a big argument and so anytime they encounter each other it's just like an argument waiting to happen but she approaches him with the prospect of getting married so that she would get access to this trust fund and then also his benefit is that being attached to her and her family's name would mean that he would be able to get a loan from the bank like he had previously tried to apply for a loan and got shot down like basically before he could even open his mouth. So they're thinking that if, you know, he's attached to the Voss family that he can get this loan that he needs. I'm actually really enjoying this one. Definitely way more than the first book so far. For me in the first book, I honestly just don't like either of the main characters and that makes it really hard to care about a romance when you don't really like the characters 
individually. Right away, I feel like I connected with these two characters a lot faster. I really enjoy them. I really enjoy their banter. Like, I am definitely an enemies to lovers girly because in the first book, they're not ever enemies really. I don't even know how I would describe what the like trope of the first book is, but I just was kind of bored by their conversations. I didn't really feel like they had a lot of good banter, but in this one, like, I love that feeling of like kind of arguing with this person that you know you secretly have these strong feelings for. I don't know. It's more, it's way more enjoyable to read for me. So I've been really liking their banter and you can tell that they both actually really like each other and they're kind of like trying to hold off on those feelings but I'm really liking where it's going so far. I think that their romance is really cute and I just like the story and like the tropes of this book a lot better than the first one so I'm really pleased with how it's going so far and I'll probably finish it like by the time I'm done working today. Honestly, the audiobook's like 11 hours but on two times speed that's less than my age hour work day so I should definitely finish before the end of the day which I'm excited about and this will be the first book checked off the list I assume and this one is completing a series since this is just a duology which is great that's the whole point of the video this is the only series we're actually going to finish in this video because the other two books I'm reading are not the last books in the series but we're making progress which is what counts hello so it's obviously way later in the day and I have a few reading updates for you. So first of all, I did finish Unfortunately Yours today while I was working. I feel like I was really hyping this book up in my first update, but I ended up landing on a three star, which is still better than this the first book. I still enjoyed this one more, but I think the realization that I have had with this book, because I believe this is my fourth Tessa Bailey book, and I think the realization I've had is that I just don't like the way she handles conflict in her books. Three out of the four books I've read, the conflict that ends up happening drives me crazy. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it other than I think that if I'm told that a character is older than me, I really heavily judge the way they behave based off of how I think that I would behave in certain situations. And so if a character is supposed to be like five years older than me, 10 years older than me, and they're acting certain ways that I just cannot even imagine myself acting, it irritates me. Like I have a hard time feeling any sympathy for them or like rooting for them because I'm just like annoyed by what they're doing. And so I think that that's what ended up happening in this book. It's definitely what happened in the first book. I just want to like shake these characters and just be like, oh my god, you're 35. Can you learn to just like express what bothers you, please? I don't know. I think the conflict is kind of what took away from it at the end, but I still landed on a three star. Like I said, I still liked it more than the first book and I'm glad to have read it, but I'm not going to really think about it forever. I honestly don't know if I'll read any more Tessa Bailey. I don't know if her books are fully for me. I did give It Happened One Summer five stars and I did really like that book, but but that's really been the only like big winner that I've had with her and I think that the more romance I read the more I'm figuring out like that I definitely have specific authors that I vibe with how they write things. I just don't know if she's one of them. Regardless, we've checked off the series. It's finished and I'm really happy about that. Also, as far as Zodiac Academy goes, I'm now a little over 50% of the way through. Honestly, the last 10%, not much has happened. I feel like we are in like the calm before the storm. Like I feel like shit's probably about to hit the fan and I'm just in this like weird in-between moment of just kind of random things going on. So I'm gonna keep working on this throughout the night. I'm basically just in bed for the rest of the night. I'm gonna read I'm watching The Hating Game for like the gazillionth time. I love this movie with every fiber of my being. I've been watching it almost every day lately. For a while, I went through a phase where Anyone But You was my comfort movie, and I still love that movie. Don't get me wrong. I think that movie is incredible, but I am just always drawn back to The Hating Game. This is my ultimate comfort movie. If I could only watch one movie for the rest of my life, I think it would be this one.
Hello. It has been a few days since I last checked in. We're only like not even a week into June and it's already been crazy and it's only gonna get crazier, but I am doing my best to persevere. So I've had a busy last couple of days, but I do have a few reading updates. So as far as Zodiac Academy goes, I can't remember how far I was the last time I updated, but I'm now at the 80% mark. I feel like I've been steadily reading like 15-ish percent a day, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's like over a hundred pages. And really the only time I've had to read is like at night before bed. So I've been making like steady progress. Now that I'm at the 80% mark, I really feel like it's about to get crazy because the end of all of these books in this series is just insanity. I feel like once I start reading again, I'm gonna have to just finish it. Like, I'm not gonna be able to read 15% tonight and stop at 95%. There's no way. So I'm kind of hopeful that I can finish it tonight. I do have to leave in a little bit and I'll be gone for a couple hours. We'll see like what time I get home. If I can finish, maybe I'll stay up a little bit later, but I just really want to finish because I really want to know what's gonna happen and just to be done with it since I've been reading it for like four or five days now. So that is what's going on with Zodiac Academy. And then also today I did start on Do Not Disturb, which is going to be the third and like final book that we're reading for this vlog. This is the second book in the Girl in 6E series. The Girl in 6E, if you aren't familiar with it, follows this girl named Deanna and she is like a self-proclaimed killer. Like she has a lot of urges to kill people and so she has taken it upon herself to lock herself in her apartment. So she literally like for over three years like never leaves the apartment that she's in. She has literally every single thing delivered to her. She has a neighbor that like locks her in so she can't leave because she's convinced that like if she did leave her apartment she would kill somebody. And so in order to like support herself from home she is a cam girl and in the first book she ends up getting involved in the affairs of one of her clients because she believes that they are about to like do something very wrong and so she kind of inserts herself into the things that are going on. That is the plot of the first book and the first book was a five-star read for me. I loved it. I think Deanna, she's such an iconic character. She's so entertaining to read from and like the actual plot of this story was super intriguing and really fast-paced. So I loved this first book and I read it like almost a year ago. So getting into the second one, I think I'm like 30% in. I'm on chapter 37, which is page 116. Honestly, going into the second book, I did not know anything because the back doesn't tell me anything. There's literally no like description on the back of the book. So going into this one, all I had in my head was how the first book ended. And this does pick up almost immediately after the end of the first book. And so we're just once again following Deanna in her like camming job and then there's like another plot that's picking up kind of a similar idea to the first book just dealing with a client that is questionable and obviously just like with her being a cam girl there is a lot of like explicit content because it's her job. So if you don't like reading about explicit content, these aren't really gonna be the books for you. It's not written with the intention of being smut. It's just explicit content. It has a very different purpose and feel to it than if you're just reading like a romance book with smut. So far, I'm really enjoying it. Like I said, Deanna is just an iconic character. So being back with her is so fun and I'm really interested to see where the plot goes with this one. Obviously have ideas based off of what's happened so far and I'm super invested in it and want to keep reading so I'm excited to continue this one. I have the audiobook on Libby and so I'm planning to continue with this one probably tomorrow while I'm working and I'm really excited. Also the chapters are so short. It's flying by because the chapters are literally like two to three pages per chapter which I love. So 
so far it's going really well. I actually already ordered the third book. I won't finish the series in this video, but I do really want to just finish it out since there's only going to be one book after this, and I don't want to take as long of a break as I did between the first and second book this time. I'd really just like to finish it. So I've already ordered the third book, and then it'll be like a whole completed series checked off my list, which will be great. Those are my reading updates. Like I said, I have to leave here in a little bit, but when I get home, I'm going to do my best to finish Zodiac Academy tonight because I'm just so ready to finish it and not in a like I just want it over kind of way but just like I'm so curious about what's gonna happen and I'm also scared about what's gonna happen. I just need to know. I need to finish it. I just want to read the book so bad. I literally feel like I'm gonna have a heart attack. I have so much anxiety racing through my body right now. Oh, what? Oh. What the fuck is going on? Oh my God, please get it together. about this for a while. Okay, so it's now the next afternoon. I am here to kind of do a final wrap up. As you guys saw last night, I did finish Faded Throne. I kind of needed to like process and think about it for a little while. I think I've decided to land on a four star rating for this one. I feel like I maybe seemed a little bit disappointed when I finished the book yesterday, but mainly that was because I was kind of expecting like a more explosive ending. Like I thought something crazy was gonna happen. And we did get like a few things that were kind of hinted at, but we weren't really given like all of the information. Like it's definitely definitely stuff that's going to be further explained in the next book and it kind of just left me in this place where like with one specific piece I was like what I know of it already like I'm not really worried about it because I kind of feel like we're going to find a way around it in the next book and then with a second piece of it it was like so vague it was basically just like we know something's happened but we really have no idea what or what it's going to mean and so it, it's not something that I'm like I felt like oh I'm dying like I immediately have to pick up the next book like I thought there was going to be some kind of cliffhanger where like I wasn't going to be able to go to bed because I was going to have to start the next book right away it's not really full-blown disappointment I was just kind of surprised that there wasn't something more significant right at the end of the book but I will say that that I think this is my favorite book in the series so far. This is book six and I have rated this one and book three four stars and the rest of the books I've rated three but I just felt like the plot points in this one were really strong and I really enjoyed the directions the story was going. Like yes I was emotionally, I was in like emotional pain the whole time but I just felt like the plot points they were stronger than some of the other books. They moved faster even though it's still like 700 pages. For the most part the book still moved at a pretty fast pace. I wasn't really ever getting bored or like exhausted by the book which is a problem I've had in the previous books in this series sometimes. So I do feel like this is probably my favorite one. I think I'm gonna give it four stars. I could have seen myself even going up to a 4.5 if the ending had been a little bit different. Regardless, I really enjoyed it and I do want to like continue with the next book again very soon. I don't want to wait another year to keep reading. So those are kind of like my final thoughts about Zodiac Academy. Academy. And then today, while I've been working, I picked up the audiobook again of Do Not Disturb and I actually already finished it. Overall, I did really like the book, but what's hanging me up a little bit is that I felt like there was so much tension and buildup through the first like 50 to 60 percent and I 
felt like when we kind of got to like the moment of what we were building up to, it was over so fast. And then it kind of just transitioned into like this other thing going on. And I was a little bit confused. I was like, am I missing chapters? This just seems odd. I don't really have any idea what the third book in the series is going to be. But overall, like I said, I, I, I'm struggling because I still really enjoyed it. I really like Deanna as a main character. Like, I just think she is so entertaining to follow. And I think that these books are very unique. I personally haven't really read anything like them. And so I want to give credit to the story for being unique and different and for how much I enjoy the character. But I guess I was a little bit confused by some of the choices made for how the conflict was handled, I guess. Because it just, it feels so different too from how the main conflict of the first book was handled. Right now, I'm kind of thinking like 3.5. I could up it to a 4 because I, again, I still really enjoyed it. So I'll maybe change my mind and go for a 4 later on, but I think for right now, I'm going to say 3.5, but I still really liked it. I still highly recommend this series. I'm very excited to read the final book in the series. With that, that is going to be the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you would like to see future installments of, of trying to complete series. I had a lot of fun with this video and I feel good making progress on some of my series so let me know if you'd like to see more and yeah that's all for today so thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video bye